Babe, what time is it? Babe? Hello? What? What time is it? I don't know. You're staring at your watch. <sighs> Welcome back to Escapement and Watch with Falling Titan. Today, a special watch, the Seiko reinterpretation or re-edition of the Willard, the Captain Willard. People are calling this one the Willard X because as you can see, it's pro specs. It's got the X on the dial. Oh man, this watch is beautiful. This is my favorite Seiko release of 2020. I did the video on the catalog and I saw everything they're coming out with. And this one, this is the one I was excited about the most. Now we did a poll on the community tab of the, of the channel. Should I get the black or the green one? The green one won 45% to 41%. And I'm glad the green one won. I, I think it's special. I love it. Ugh, I, I just, um, I am really happy with it. Like, unbelievable. So I have a weird relationship with turtles. I love turtles. Now, when I first got into the hobby, and found out, not the hobby, I've always been into the hobby, even as a kid. But when I first found out about Seiko's a couple years ago, I did a poll on Facebook and I asked, turtle or samurai? You know, that's the typical newbie, uh, typical newbie question, which one to buy? And the turtle won. And I used to think the turtle was ugly. And I was like, how can the turtle win? Started seeing it more, more photos. Seiko kept making some new additions. And then I saw it in real life and I saw it on some people's wrists. And it weared amazing, ultra slim and so much presence. So it won me over and then I became such a big turtle fan. I started buying turtles left and right. Now, every time I bought a turtle, I would sell it right away because it would be too big on my wrist. 6.5 inch wrist so like i love the turtle but then i'm like oh man it's too big for me now this one it did shrink which i'm so happy about we're gonna check the dimensions but that's just a little background of my history with turtles i know this is not a turtle but you know cushion case and i've heard some people call it a turtle or the original turtle now seiko's first dive watch was a 62 mass and then they made the Slim Turtle. I believe it's the 6105 8000, where they, where they made the crown guard the whole case. And they moved the crown from three to four o'clock. And then on this one, they slimmed it up a bit and exaggerated the crown guard, made it more protection, really tucked it in there. Beautiful protection, beautiful tuck in, unbelievable. And that's what the Willard got created. Now, this watch, why is it called Captain Willard? From the famous movie Apocalypse Now, Martin Sheen wore this and he was Captain Willard. And that's what made the watch explode in uh, pop culture and in history. Seiko doesn't acknowledge, like, formally. They don't, they don't say the movie had influence and they don't mention the Vietnam War where a lot of soldiers would go to the PX store and buy the Willard because it was very robust, tank, durable, affordable, and they would actually use it in war. So it was a famous war watch as well as the movie. So legendary status of this watch, Seiko doesn't really say anything about it. Seiko says this watch is famous, not this one, the original, because uh, Namori Yumura, Yumura, sorry, <laughs> Japanese man, May 1st, 1978, first person ever to reach the North Pole solo. So he got to the North Pole by himself. Very nice achievement. Very nice history. Notch on Seiko's belt. And uh, yeah, that's what Seiko says the watch is famous for. But clearly, because of the war, no one wants to be associated with war. So it makes sense that Seiko doesn't say anything. 
but because they they came out with the green the, the olive the drab green the nato green whatever you want to call it they came out with this first then you know seiko is telling us enthusiasts i see you and i got you i'm not gonna admit it but here it is <laughs> so we know that seiko knows and that's fine by me i love it this thing's beautiful all right so that was a little bit about the history now the original was 44 mils this one is about 42 and then they made the reissue or the re no i guess it's a reissue the sla 033 uh last year 2019 45 millimeter huge so even bigger than the original and the crown on the original was at the 20. so this one is at the 18 a little bit different i heard some people complain about that but come on guys that's ridiculous that's ridiculous to complain about some videos were explaining how you know if the case is too different and they went into the minutia of the shape but i guarantee when i have a child and i'm wearing this across the room his first words are going to be and he's like one or two he's going to say willard because we all know what this is doesn't matter that it, the crown is off by a notch. What, two ticks? One tick? We all know what it is. Come on. That's all I'm going to say about that one. So, 200 meters water resist. Let's talk about the crown. Some people complaining the crown is different than the original. But guys, this is not a clone watch. This is a new watch. This is a reinterpretation, just like this one is. So it's a modern version of the Willard, more true to form than the SLA-033 because the SLA-033 is really for collectors. You're going to wear it once, twice, safe queen, come on. It's too expensive. This one, just like the original, well, I don't want to say affordable, but it's affordable, R relatively affordable <laughs> because the soldiers used to pick them up, readily available, this one as well not limited so more true to form to the original willard its spirit reborn in this watch this is big this watch is huge for seiko if you're a seiko collector this is the watch you want and if you just want one seiko just one this is the watch you want if you're a rolex collector omega whatever and you just want one seiko you go for the willard that's it there's no, some people 62 mass, but it's really the Willard. So this watch is huge and I'm loving it. As you can tell, I'm excited. That coin edge is pretty nice. I love the deep, thick bevel on that crystal. And there's a slight dome to it. It kind of distorts. Unreal. We got the drilled, uh, drilled lugs. It has the beautiful silicone strap. But we are going to change that. We got some... We got some cool gifts from Tropic Straps. We're going to make a strap video after that. So the crown has different grooves than the original. No big deal. Again, not a clone. Unfortunately, no sign crown. Same thing they did with the 63 mass. No sign crown. But the SLA trilogy, the heavy hitter versions, they got the sign crown. That's unfortunate because the S just, they could make it different. They don't have to put the word... They, they have the word Seiko, the full Seiko, on the SLA trilogies. So they can just put the S, like, on my, uh, on my mod, my SKX mod. Because this S means a lot to the Seiko fans. What does it mean? What's the S stand for? It's not an S. On my world, it means hope. That's the watch. It's beautiful. Now, let's check the case back. I didn't peel the sticker off. Um, you know what? Let's do it. I'm going to have to take off my gloves. There's the case back. There's my serial number, 6R35, and there's the case code. Uh, what is that? It looks like... Oops, sorry guys, nicked the camera. 00T0? Maybe I can't see it clear. That's what it looks like. Japan. And there's that famous wave. Beautiful. Loving this case. 
hopefully I'm giving you guys a lot of visual. When I ordered this watch, it took a long time, but I kept, oops, sorry, I kept searching the internet because I wanted to see more. I need to see this on screen. I need to see it nonstop. It, I never seen such a watch have such attention. Like everyone I know bought it, like it's special. And that aluminum insert, beautiful, vintage, really love that aluminum insert. Look how it changes color. It's like a uh, very light olive, dark green, it, depending on the light. You can't get that with ceramic. You can't get that with steel. And only beautiful aluminum. I think they said it was anodized aluminum. So I don't know if that's true, but that's what I read. My loom pip looks aligned. Thank God, finally. Unlike this one. This one's to the left. So Seiko, a little bit better with the aluminum inserts. Maybe their steel drilling machine. Not sorted yet. Bezel action, I would say perfect. It's a little bit dampened. Alignment perfection. Good resistance. When I first turned it, it was very stiff, but you know, it broke it breaks in nicely. It's it's perfect. Good damping, good clicks, solid, doesn't feel cheap. Is there a back plate? I'm gonna travel each click and go back. Yeah, I'm going one by one and going back. So a little bit of back play, half a millimeter I would say, of back play. But it's ultra solid. Look at that, re-hot. So there's no chapter ring. It's printed on the dial. And then it's just a stainless steel. Um, I guess you could call it chapter ring. But it's part of the case. Now those hands are beautiful. If you got the black one, apparently, I've never had the black one yet. But the hands are all polished. This one has the same hands as the 63 mass. Half polished, half brushed so you're gonna get an amazing play with light i'll show you some macros hopefully i'll get them out so we can check out those hands in better Ooh, looks so good guys are you falling in love with this watch let me know down in the comments that sapphire with that thick bevel very true to form to the original but it was hard lex uh in the original so this is upgraded and the original had the you know the crown it, it was a turn lock system, 150 meters water resist. This is 200, screw down crown, much better. That's the joy of having a modern version. I, I'm not a fan of vintage. Okay, I love vintage, but not actually dealing with vintage. So I love reissues. It wasn't fair for new Seiko fans who love the Willard. We can't get it, that's not fair. And we can't afford it, that sucks. And then the SLA comes out, it's like, you know what guys, too bad. That's what it felt like. So sucks even more. Then this comes out, Seiko saying, I see you and I got you. And thank you, Seiko. I'm excited about this. If I was gonna keep one of these, which one is it gonna be? <laughs> it's gonna be this one. This is the one Seiko diver you gotta have. You gotta have it. So let's do it. Let's compare what I always do with an SKX. I'm gonna line up the Indices, there we go. This is my famous Blue Lagoon SKX. Man, look at that. It's basically SKX level. What do you guys think? So if you can wear an SKX, you can wear the new Willard. Look at that. So basically the Willard seems a little bit slimmer except for that domed sapphire. My SKX mod has a flat sapphire, but yeah. Let's do, let's do the weight guys. And then I'm gonna do dimensions. This is gonna be my typical long review. Let me know down in the comments if you want me to do a technical review where I just go over all the stats and make it a quick five minute video. Might do that one after. So 109 grams on the strap. Just for reference, because I know a lot of you guys have SKXs on a strap, 114. So very similar 
5 grams heavier on the SKX. All right, let's um, we're going to compare it with the 63 mass. Then I'll do then I'll do sizing. Sorry, there we go. All right, so this is a 40 mil. This is a 42 point, I believe, seven. Sixty three mass, beautiful with that limited edition blue dial. That one definitely going to wear better for smaller wrists. But it has a longer um, lug to lug slightly. There. Wow. 2020 Seiko watches. These are beautiful. Which one's your favorite? Let me know down in the comments. I might be trading this one soon with a, with a sub for a special uh, watch. I don't know. But this one, I think I'm going to keep probably forever. I really like it. What do you guys think if we change the insert to black? Kind of make it like a reverse Kermit. Or remember the SBDC 059? Something like that. I don't know. Hopefully some modding opportunities come up with that. So, yeah, let me... Do you want me to keep the 63 in the, in the shot? Let's do the dimensions. We know the dimensions, but we're going to do them. 42.4. Very SKX-like. And with that domed four, 13.9. But that has a dome, so it's a little bit misleading. And then the lug to lug, the most important, the most important, 45.9. Yep. Wow. And we have, this is what shocked me. I thought this was going to be 22 and it's 20. Okay. That's interesting. Now, something that I found interesting, let's check out the bezel. Oops. Poor Willard. Ah, this is tough guys. There we go. 40 millimeter bezel. That's crazy. So this watch is going to wear small 40.2 millimeter bezel. All right, guys, we're back. Sorry about that. I had to grab the turtle. I forgot it in the watch box. This is lent in to the channel from a sub. I got it back. 42 on the turtle for the bezel. So bigger bezel, gonna wear bigger, and of course, much bigger body. 44.2, so very similar to the original 81110 Willard, 44 millimeter width. Let's check them out. Now if the turtle is too big for you, you can get the Willard and you get that beautiful vintage Seiko case shape but in a more wearable size. Man, they really, they really, this is a grand slam. I'm not gonna say home run. That downplays the watch. It's a grand slam. Yep, it's a grand slam. Unbelievable. Nice. Um, all right, put the turtle there. Let's do a wrist shot. And then uh, we'll put on the time grapher. The, the watch is not wound up. I didn't wind it at all since I got it. <laughs> yes. Oh, man. Yup. Look at that. I'm going to try to get you guys all the angles on a wrist and reach far away to give you a more true to form look. Man, look at that wrist presence. Looks beefy. Amazing. When I used to wear my turtle and my SKX, my wife always said the turtle looked better on me. She's like, that watch looks so much nicer. But I'm um, like, no, it's too big. Come on. So yeah, this is basically a much better wearing turtle. Nice. 
uh, right away, I can tell you, feels very light, very comfortable. Yeah, it's basically like an SKX, but way better. We got the 6R35, 70 hour power reserve. Now let's check out that 6R35. It's gonna probably perform badly right now because it's not wound up. I'm gonna wind it up and then uh, hopefully it does good. And then we'll do the loom shot. Let's hear the winding. Crown play. None. Let's go out to the hacking position. Pretty, pretty solid. I'm putting good force. You know what I love? I love that the date window doesn't have a frame. Very clean. Usually they're too thick and they look gaudy. Even though there's chrome around the applied indices, um, I still don't like it on the frame. Unless, unless I'm getting a Grand Seiko. Ultra smooth winding. Oh man, very nice. Now, because this one has a 70 hour, uh, I find it takes longer to wind it up. And I know that because, oh, I thought I was wearing my 63 mask. There it is. Um, when I put on the time grapher, I thought it was full and it was getting beat error. And this watch usually gets a little bit of beat error, like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, when, I, when it's not full. And I found that when it's low on power reserve, because this is 70 hours, when there's about 10 hours left and you let it sit, it starts speeding up. That's what this watch does. But it's, it's just because the power is not being delivered evenly and it's so low. Very common. So hopefully uh, that's enough. Now, screw down crown, very lightly, very lightly. You can just, there's a little, like I like to backspin it. Where is it? There, backspin it and then one turn and then no force, no force. It's in, I'm just spinning it on its own and it's going in. Never push in and turn it once it's caught you're just gonna thread the crown and strip it i'll just bring it in hmm. i like to put it on the crown there it's gonna auto detect but i gotta adjust it it's 53 degrees links below if you want to buy one of these and a bergeon tool i always have links for those and i'll try to find links for this watch but i doubt amazon will have it it's too early but once once it has it, I'm going to update the, the description. Ooh, Very nice. 300 amplitude. That's what I like to see. Losing a lot of time. 0 0.3 beat error. I know it's, I know the, I know the thing is not full hundred percent. If it's 0 0.3, I didn't wind it enough. Okay. I'm gonna. Give it a little bit more wine to prove my point. Hopefully I prove my point. You don't look like a fool. <laughs> Let's uh, give it 20 more wines. Now these Seikos, they're gonna, they're gonna perform not so great out of the box. Give it a month, then regulate it. So I'm gonna wear this for one month straight. Man, I don't think I can take this watch off ever, but um, yeah. Then I'm going to regulate it. We're going to get it to zero. We're going to get it perfect. It's not hard. I got lucky with this one. This one's basically zero by itself. It was plus six. Remember that video guys? And then it calmed down and on the wrist it's doing, uh, what is it doing? Yeah, it's doing zero basically. Okay. Got it. All right. We're good. Let's see if the beat error goes to zero. Then we know it's at a full charge. Okay. I'm pretty sure it's at a full charge. So the beat error is just that off. I'll fix it, but not now. I'll definitely fix it. Ugh, then it's performing bad. So I will update you guys on this. I'm really happy about the, the amplitude. 300, I can work with it. I can adjust this instantly. And this just as fast. No problem. <laughs> so I got a bad one out of the box, but it's technically a good one. 
because it's got good amplitude. I'd rather have strong amplitude and these be off because these can be adjusted. So yeah, let's check out the loom real quick. And technically, you guys, I should keep it for half an hour on there, especially on the first check. Oops. All right, let's compare it with the 63 mass, the loom, because it's the one that's out. There we go. Come on, focus. There we go. Basically the same loom on the 63 and the new Willard X. Glowing, very nice, very happy about that. Maybe even a bit brighter than the 63. They look to be like a little bit thicker plots, but less um, length, less uh, baton shape. Yep. All right, guys, I'm calling it. Please like, share, and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs> My arm is gonna break. Oh, I can't.